And then uh, I, I am the co-founder, as I said. Uh, married 23 years, five kids. Uh, used to own 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Has anyone ever seen that in San Francisco? In the area? Yeah, so I used to own that in Phoenix. And uh, the founder is that uh, a good buddy of mine. I've actually done some work with that uh, company in the franchising. And then I spent my whole life with the 3%. Kind of weird. Uh, as soon as I got into college, uh, I, was, I was teaching tennis to a, a lot of high-level country clubs and uh, different personnel there. I played both tennis and baseball at college. And then as soon as I got done, I went right to Major League Baseball to coach. Uh, I got hurt, and so my playing career turned into a coaching career pretty quick. And so I just went to work every day with about 15 millionaires every day. You know, and they were these high, just high performers, alpha dogs, everything. And then when I left baseball, I started working with a lot of entrepreneurs like Jill, who started companies and just built these up to multi-million dollar companies, sometimes billion dollar companies. And uh, in America, only 3.4% of companies make over a million dollars. So it's a very rare error for companies to build up and they're not all the dial corp and, and Facebook, <laughs> right? We just under the gun. So here's, this is who I am uh, at 13. This is me sitting around at the pool in my Speedo. Last time I was in a Speedo. So, uh, but I was sitting there contemplating the world. I had this great assignment at school. I was all excited about. And I think my teacher was kind of calling it in. It was probably before a break, you know, like uh, before like a holiday, before Easter break. Like, hey, we're going to do career week at school. And so it was a really interesting assignment because it had to determine these questions of what life was going to be like when you were 30 years old. That's 30 years old. I was 13. That seemed like forever away. I mean, the song on the radio right there was Prince's Party like it's 1999, right? Like that was the big thing. And I was like, that's forever away, like whatever, right? And exactly 30 years was 1999 for me at that time. Uh, that's when I would turn 30. So it was, a, it was a unique moment because the backstory, I took the assignment really seriously because I think because of my family. I was the youngest of four kids and my oldest brother was in college. He was at Michigan State and he was a goalie. He was a hockey player. And then uh, my next brother was an All-State tailback and he was really good. And uh, he averaged like over nine yards a carry. So all these big college coaches would show up at our house and come into our living room. And I thought that was so cool because I was like, I totally saw you on TV on Saturday. <laughs> like they were really like big people like that uh, were asking my brother to come and play. And that was a cool experience. And then my sister, who was just a couple years older than me, she had just been named uh, Miss Michigan Teen. And she was a gymnast and a pageantry woman and did that and went into acting. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so much better than all my brothers and sisters. Like I'm totally playing in the major leagues. Like that's like gonna be automatic, right? That's what I really wanted to do. I loved baseball as a kid. And so I, I'm sure that like I turned in my assignment, you know, and the teacher was probably like, oh, okay, here's another boy, a uh, fireman, uh, policeman, uh, pro athlete, right? Like probably just like three vials of what we were going to be when we were 30. But I was like serious about it. So one of the things that jumped ahead like a couple years that really happened that was very impactful for me was uh, I was invited to this big showcase camp. Only the best players of all these counties around our area were invited. And the, the person who held the camp was a former major league player. And he invited everybody in. And I was really excited to go play. And I was going to be with all the best. And I thought, man, this is up against the best. I don't know how I'm going to do, but I'm going to bring everything I got. And I had this like great week, great week. I was, I was really good that week. And so I was named the MVP of the camp. And so it was pretty cool because I got this one-on-one -on -one with the director. Right, the major league guy, and he said, hey, you know, what do you want to do? And I said, well, you know, I want to do what you did. You know, I want to play in the major leagues. And he's like, you can do that. And I was like, no way. Like, everyone's telling me, no, you're not tall enough. You're not fast enough. You're not going to be this. You're not that. The percentages are way out of the way. You'll never make it. All these things. But one of the things I recognized at that point was that the people that were giving me that advice had no knowledge of doing it. And now here was the guy who had the experience saying, you can do it. And that made me a believer, just like that. It was a, it was a big moment of mine, a person who stepped up and who was willing to, to help and guide me. Because I had no idea. When I set some of the goals, I didn't really know how to get there. I just kind of put them up on the wall. I was like, yeah, let's see if that works. I don't know how to get there, but I'm going to try for that. And so it was, it, was a, it was a big moment. And really my first kind of 
uh, blush into like goal setting and figuring out how goals work. So it's a great experience for me. And I will say, does anyone know who Derek Jeter is? Baseball player, Derek Jeter, Yankees, you know, like, so he was at the camp and I was MVP. So I want to just make that note, like, pfft. I was better than Derek that week. Now, I was 15 and he was 12. But you know, like, I don't, you know, that's fine. Like, I was just.